Welcome to this CC3D video. In this video, what we're going to do is actually connect a discovery buzzer that will make a sound in the event of a lost model, or you can just sound it from your transmitter, to a CC3D that's connected via something like PPM to, at the moment, we're using a Tyrannus radio and an FR Sky D4R2 uh, receiver just connected by the first three wires. And the way this works is I've set up a channel on the radio so that if I uh, just flick my little pull switch at the back of the radio, it will actually make the buzzer sound. So let me just do a very quick demo of that. Power up the CC3D. Okay, that was just the buzzer initializing as it always does. Once the board has booted, then all I have to do to sound the buzzer is just flick the switch. And what we're actually doing there is we have pushed one of the PPM channels that's coming in from the FR Sky receiver out of connection 5. So that although we're connected via PPM, so all of the connections and the radio signals are coming over just the three wires, we're actually managing to push out a PWM signal that the buzzer needs out of one of the spare ports on the CC3D. So in this video, I'm going to go through how you configure and set this up so it works. I'm going to not go into the detail of how you configure the model on the Tyrannus. That is something that I'm going to cover in the Tyrannus series of videos. I'll put a link to those uh, videos in the description. Today we're going to concentrate on how you wire up this CC3D board and then also what you need to do in OpenPilot to configure it so that the CC3D not only hears the PPM channels coming out of the receiver, but also pushes one of them out of the spare motor connectors. So you can connect things like servos for stabilization or even things like a discovery buzzer. So the first thing we'll need to talk about is to actually have a look at how we have this wired in a little bit more detail because we haven't talked about PPM with the CC3D before. So the way we have this wired up is that on the outputs, that's the easiest one to do first, uh, because the first four outputs are normally going to be configured for the four motors of a quadcopter, outputs ESC5 and ESC6 are available for us to plug anything in. Now we're going to use ESC5, so that's where we're going to plug the buzzer. On the other side, because we're using PPM, um, we're actually only connecting the first three wires, the positive, the negative, and also the first signal. There is a web page that you can go through in case uh, yours doesn't work. You can actually connect the PPM signal to the CC3D either using pin three or pin eight on the input. And that really depends whether or not you've got things like one shot ESCs configured. So I'm not gonna go through that in this video. Um, we haven't got one shots configured here and pin three is working fine, but if it isn't, then I'd recommend that you go through, read this document and change what you need to to get it working for you. So now that we understand how it's all wired together, the next thing we need to do then is connect this into the laptop. I'll start Open Pilot, and we'll go through how you configure it so this is going to work for you. Okay, so here we are in Open Pilot. I'll also start the camera because what we'll do is we'll actually film the pieces on the bench and then I can insert that video as we need. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously power up the CC3D. We are connected via the USB cable, so that will appear in the display in OpenPilot. The other thing that we're going to do is actually power the CC3D using a battery eliminator circuit too. And the reason we're doing that is because I want the receiver powered, because the USB will not power the receiver, and we obviously want to talk to the radio. So there's a couple of places that we need to have a look. Now we have our CC3D connected and we have the radio connected too. First of all is we need to go into configuration and into the hardware settings. 
the very first thing we need to do is change what the receiver port is set to. Now there are three options for PPM. There's PPM, PPM plus PWM and PPM plus outputs. We want PPM plus outputs. That will allow us to push some of the channels that we're not using to fly with out of these connectors here in five and six so we can use them for something else. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we need to click save and then we will have to power cycle the board, i.e. unplug all the power and plug it back in, in order for it to come back up. Now, once or twice when I tried this on my board, it then got stuck and it would constantly cycle and reboot and not connect. If that's the case, then to get out of that, you need to just jump over to firmware, you need to click rescue, then you need to unplug and replug the board back in, then you just need to click on erase settings. It'll erase all the settings. It'll take about half a minute to do it. And then once it's finished, just unplug it, plug it back in again, and it'll boot fine. And then you can start the configuration again. Just upon those kind of weird things that happened occasionally when I was playing with this. So back in the config. So now we have PPM outputs. We've clicked save and we've rebooted our board. We're now ready to go on to the next stage. We now need to assign the different channels. So we're going to go onto vehicle. And here we can see that I've got my throttle, roll, pitch, and your channels on one, two, three, four. So as I move things like the throttle, we can see the values change here in the display. I also have channel five set on one of my three position switches. So as I move the switch, you can see that I'm changing the modes too. The last one that I got is actually accessory. Two. Now accessory 2 can be any of these accessories but I just chose the bottom one so it's out the way. I've chosen that as a PPM input and I've added it as channel 6. And channel 6 is the one that's connected to this little momentary switch here on the back. So if I show you very quickly on the trialist what that looks like, if I go into menu page, go down to the inputs. They see we actually got one called lost, which is on switch SH, which is here in the top right hand corner. If I click page for the mixers again, there we go. We have channel six is the lost input and I've called it lost alarm or L alarm. So it's channel six we're interested in. So I've set up channel six. So when I flick the switch, not only will we hear the buzzer, but you'll see the value change here on the screen. We also need here in here to make sure that we have, as well as assigning the channel, a minimum PWM value of 1000, maximum of 2000 and a neutral of 1500. If we don't set that up in here, we won't have enough to make the buzzer sound. Because if you remember from the other video that we did with this lost model alarm buzzer, it has to be above the halfway point on the channel for it to make a noise. Those two numbers should make sure that we do that. Next thing we need to do then, now we've assigned that channel, is go into vehicle. And we jump into custom, and we have to then set up the output that we want the buzzer to be connected to. Now here is channel five. So on each of these, by default they're disabled, but you can tell the CC3D what you're gonna have connected. We're not going to pick anything apart from accessory two, because that's the channel that we've just set up previously. So channel six on the radio is accessory two on the CC3D. And we need to click the curve. Now there are two curves on here. Basically all they're doing is they're just setting up a straight linear line from zero to the maximum number. Now for this, we can actually put in zero, which means it has nothing to do with that curve at all. And 127 is the maximum value. So we're gonna have all of channel curve one, which is just that little straight line. If you scroll down here, you can see all the mixing and everything going on with all of the different motors for the four outputs that are configured on the CC3D. So once we've done that, we click on save. And then we also just need to go back to multi-rotor and click on save again. Found that if you didn't do that, sometimes it wasn't happy. I'd always then go back to the custom mix, 
just double check that channel 5 is on the right accessory number and is giving you that right number underneath. Once we've done that, then we're almost there. Last thing we need to do is in output, again is just make sure that the range is 1000 to 2000, because if you remember outputs 1, 2, 3, 4 are our first four motors, output 5 is the one we're going to plug the buzzer into, uh, just set it as 1000 at the low end, 2000 at the top end, you can set the midpoint, doesn't really matter, but I just happen to have, and then that gives us the range to move. We also need to just keep it as um, 50 for now, 50 works fine with this particular buzzer, and then click save. Now what that should mean is now the board is accepting the PPM inputs but also is expecting to put some of those channels out the side. We also have the vehicle settings where we've told it that we want accessory 2 to be a linear output. Uh, we've then saved that and we've also gone back and saved it to multi-rotor. In inputs, we've configured accessory 2 to be the channel that we want for the switch we're interested in, making sure that the minimum and maximum are 2000 and 1000 respectively. And then on output, we've made sure that the channel 5 range that's available is 1000 to 2000 and that means that we will have a change when we flick the switch. Once all that is done, then you are good. So if you just then flick the switch on the top right hand corner that you've configured for channel 6, which is connected to accessory 2, which is output on the put 5. The buzzer will sound. Now the trick with this is to go through the steps and it might take you one or two goes through to get the board configured and have everything working. I had to do it uh, two times before it all figured out. Like I say, the first time had a little bit of a dicky fit and if it does have that dicky fit, go into firmware, click on rescue, plug the CC3D in. Once it's in, click on array settings because sometimes when you're doing this process, it can occasionally hiccup. So probably the first thing to do before you start playing with this is back your settings up and then you have something to restore if all goes wrong. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to install the buzzer onto a CC3D with a CPPM or PPM receiver. And it's also a great way if you want to do things like put in a manually controlled servo to adjust things like the tilt of a camera on the model as well. It allows you to put that channel out the side of the CC3D to do all kinds of things with. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.